Hello guys. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do a regression on your PID3 calculator emulator, or if you have a real thing, you can do it there too. So you should see on the screen here an uh, example of some data that we might want to try and find an equation for, as well as the calculator. So uh, let's get started right away. Uh, first thing, I'll go into the menu labeled stat and click on that and hit enter again, enter the edit, and you'll see here I've already entered all the data in here. But this just corresponds to the table you see at the side. So you can take a moment and enter such data yourself or whatever data you're looking to get in there. And we can proceed to the next step. So the, the next thing after that is to visualize that data. So we can go into the stats plot menu, which is reached by hitting second and then the y equals button. And you can see that the first option there, plot one, is turned off. And what it does is it plots L1 against L2 to look in those two values there. So I'm going to hit enter to enter that data, or that, that stat plot, and I'm going to turn it on. It's the first thing I do. You don't really need to do anything else in here, but you can see that there are some extra options that you can do to change your marker size, to uh, maybe reorder the things and plot L2 as your X values and L1 as your Y values, etc. But I just want to go and see that. So once I've got that turned on, I can click the graph button and it should visualize that data for me. So I can then confirm that I'm actually getting all my data in here. It doesn't really look like it. It looks like I see about 8 points there, but I can see that I actually have 24 points of data that I've entered in here. So the next thing I could do is I click on the window menu, and it shows me the range of X values and the range of Y values that I'm going to show. It's essentially giving the domain and range for the, for the visual space on the graph. So the X values are set from negative 10 to 10, Meanwhile, my x values run actually from 1 to 24, so I'm going to change that out a little bit, make that a negative 2, and make this maybe a 48. Well, maybe not even that, maybe 40. I want to be bigger than, than 24 so that when I get my, my equation in there in the end, I can sort of predict where things are going, so I want to see more than I've got for data points. But I'll work for the x values. So my y value is same sort of idea. My y values range from 0.34 all the way up to 273. So certainly negative 10 to 10 is not going to be a very good choice there. Uh, so again, I'll give myself a negative 2 little buffer on the low end. And again, I want to have some predictive power. So I'm going to go up to maybe, say, 350, a little higher than I should be getting here to see what happens with the graph on the line. So I'll hit enter, or rather I'll hit graph again after I've reset those things. And now I can see all 24 of my points, so it's to give me the ability to predict what might happen here. And from the look of these points, it looks vaguely parabolic, that might be something to, to grab, but it also sort of seems to start indicating that maybe it starts to level off again at the top here. I'm not sure, but it looks like there might be a little curvature near the top of that. So the next step will be to run some uh, regression equations, try and find something that's a good fit for that. So. We can again go into the stats menu, and this time rather than editing the data, I'm going to arrow over to calculate, and it gives me a bunch of options here. Uh, we're interested in the regression equation, so we're going to skip all the way down to full 5 as sort of the start point here. But it gives a quadratic regression, so that would see if a parabola is a good fit here, a cubic, see if a cubic is a good fit. But then we have all of our library functions now, so we kind of know what some of those mean. Coordinate is x to the fourth. And then there's a linear regression, a natural log regression, an exponential regression, a power regression, and a logistics regression. Hey, there's even a sine regression for trig, if you're moving your head there. So I was thinking to myself, it looked like it was kind of leveling off, and that should be the logistics equation that's described in 4.9. I'm going to go ahead and try that one. So I hit enter to select it, and then enter again to run it. And the logistics takes a bit of work to put in there, because formula is rather strange. It's c divided by this 1 plus this exponent with a negative exponent in it. But it gives me the, the, the values for a, b, and c that are necessary in there. Uh, I can certainly record them, but that doesn't seem like it's all that useful yet. Uh, it would be nice to see visually whether this looks like it's fitting the data very tight here or not. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to graph this equation. And rather than go to the key and we're copying all those values down and then copying them back in, I can go to the y equals dialog where I would normally graph those things. And there's a copy paste function built into the calculator. It's a little hard to get to, but it's in there. So we click the, the vars button. I think that stands for variables. And we arrow down or click 5 to go to statistics. 
and we've got an equation that we're interested in, so we arrow over to equation, and right at the top of the list is the regression equation. There. So I can hit enter, and it'll copy paste that data in there with all the right numbers in there, so I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about how ugly it is. Now I can just go straight to graph and see it. And I can see that actually that's a pretty decent looking fit there. It looks like that fits pretty nice and tight. So that's, that's the general gist of the regression equation. So uh, for your calculator assignment, one of the things that I asked you to do was to actually replicate this thing. And so hopefully you appreciate that it would be much easier to take a screenshot at this point and copy paste it into the document that you're going to then uh, submit to me or email to me um, however you like. So there's one other thing I'm going to try in here. And I think it'll, it'll work in here. I'm not totally sure if it works on this particular uh, type of regression with the logistics equation, but I'm going to find out if it does. Um, there's an option to enable in here a statistical measure called the correlation coefficient. And it's essentially a percentage of accuracy measure that's done through some fancy statistics. You don't have to really understand it. We can turn it on. So if I go into second zero to open the catalog, this lists all the functions that are included in the calculator. Way more than we'd ever want to use. But I'm going to arrow down to D. I'm looking for something called diagnostic on, and that'll enable that functionality. Now, there's two ways to do this. I can either arrow down to D, or I can click the uh, button that has D as a label on it. So if I'm looking at the, the letters written in blue above each of the keys here, I can see that there's actually a D right up here at the X minus 1 button. That'll skip down to D. It's just a little quicker and easier. Uh, so there it is. Diagnostic on. Turn that on. Hit enter to run it. So it's done. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to run those statistics again. So you can visualize this once more. I'm going to go, oops, wrong spot, I hit second, I didn't want to do that. Uh, so I will quit that. Okay, diagnostic on still there. I'm going to go back into the stats menu, rerun my regression. Run the logistics, I'll do it once more. And we'll just give it to me. No, it won't. The logistics equation doesn't show that. Um, one of the more complicated regression things, so I guess they just didn't enable the calculator to find that correlation coefficient. But I can show you what it looks like on another one of these things. Again, it's like a stats. I also thought that it looked a little like a quadratic, so let me try that one out. So that's number five, and then the quadratic regression. Right here. And there, it actually does give me some things. Uh, it gives me r squared being 0.998. Well, the, the uh, correlation coefficient I'm looking for is actually r. So what I'd want to do is take the square root of that 0.998. And I think there's even a nice way that I could do that. I could uh, take the second square root of, and I could, of course, either type that number in, just copy it there, but I think I remember seeing a place where I could get that out of the, the variables menu. So let me see if that actually works. I'm not sure about this one myself, but I'll try it. So back down to statistics, enter, and over to equation. And yeah, I thought I saw R down there. So there's R squared. I can hit enter, and I think it'll pull that number in there. Yeah. So there's R squared in there. And I can hit enter, and it should calculate it. So what that would mean is with 99.9% .9 accuracy, this isn't quite exactly what it means, but it's as close as we're going to get for this particular class, I could say that I could actually fit a quadratic to that. Now, that's actually not even as accurate as the uh, logistics one is, because the logistics one is the one that we're trying to have in But we can graph that particular quadratic as well if we want and see how that's going to look and behave. So to do that, close that one first, I go down to a new graph, and graph the quadratic instead. This time I can again use the variable button to copy paste. Arrow down to statistics and enter. Arrow over. I'm going to grab the regression equation. But the calculator does it just keeps track of the most recently one done in there. So if I do the regression equation now the same way I did last time, now it copy pastes the one that has x squared in it and x in it instead of the one that has e in it. And if I go to graph, it'll graph that as well. And so now I can see here that I have the quadratic equation curving up at either end and eventually going away faster, and the logistics equation leveling off. And they're both pretty good fits. So um, here we get a little 
taste of, of what can happen in statistics. Since they're both good fits, I mean, even the one that was the poorer fit, if you're taking my word for it, was 99.9% .9 accurate on going through the data that was given to us. Uh, now, what's that mean? Well, let's think about the problem. I wanted to talk about some predictive power in this thing. Here we're talking about subscribers of cell phones, I believe. And it's showing as time goes by, the number of people measured in millions that are subscribing to have cell phone service. Well, cell phones were pretty new in 85, so it wasn't that many people. The business community, they're also very expensive. 2008, fairly recently, cell phones have gotten pretty cheap. A lot of people, now, so now we're at uh, 270 million people have phones. Um, and we can predict, okay, so what is it looking like now, 2012, so four years later. So think about the reasonableness of this. There's only so many people on the planet. And until it gets to the point where there's some justification why one person would want to have three or four cell phones to themselves, um, there's kind of a natural cap on hitting the population of the planet, and it should be something less than that, because there's a lot of people who live in the third world who care toughness about, about owning a phone or not. So having something like the parabola, which I can zoom out and see a little more on, having something like the parabola isn't going to make sense. It runs away way too quick. It doesn't level off to represent that there's going to be a cap on the number of phones that people are going to need to have. So the logistics equation simply makes more statistical sense and more logical sense for the one to have in there. And within the logistics equation, if we go back to what the equation looks like, the number that sits in the numerator is the vertical or the horizontal asymptote that caps out the logistics equation. So here, three. 142.6 million subscribers is the anticipated cap on the number of people who would want to have a cell phone. So that seems somewhat reasonable. It's a lot of people, it's a big planet. Uh, better to have that than have one where the number of subscribers is remodeled to be increasing without bound forever. People just don't uh, reproduce fast enough to have cell phones increase at that rate. So. Anyways, there we see how we can get some of that information on there. I demonstrate a few of the other features in there, and you can call that good things.